What's going on guys? So today I'm showing off my new PM2 project. All right, I got some flytanium scales and some flytanium hardware for this guy. All right, so this one is the Spyderco PM2, if you're not familiar with the knife. And these are the, uh, the Lotus, I believe, titanium scales for it. Very, very cool. Really, really love the way this feels. I love the way it looks, of course, but this also has a uh, flytanium hardware kit. So we have the blue um, hardware, all right? Blue pivot screw. We have the body screws here, the tubes on the back, all right? Also blue, as well as our uh, tube um, lanyard hole spacer piece. All right, so you see you got a bunch of different colors for PM2s. So these are all PM2 parts kits. All right, got the bronze, the gold, the purple, the original, but these are all titanium. Those are just the original parts that came out of the knife. Uh, and of course the blue, which is on the actual knife itself. All right, it's just really nice, specifically when you put like, um, you know, aftermarket scales on there, you want to really pop. Getting a little bit of color in those, uh, in the hardware is just really nice. It's just kind of, I don't know, it just stands out quite a bit, which I really like a lot. And same thing with the, uh, you can see the pocket clip screws as well. But anyway, so um, I did this little knife, I did this project, I also grabbed this to show you because I thought this was pretty neat. I have another project I'm gonna be doing in the future with some more uh, flytanium parts. That'll be a whole separate video. But I had to, uh, to try this guy out. This is a just a little capsule holder, like for your keys, which I usually would use for, you know, some Motrin or if I wanna carry some Tylenol around or something. I've done, I've done that so many times in the past where I had something on my keys uh, that just held a couple pills there. But this one is titanium and it's in the shape of a beer keg, which is super cool. All right, it does come with some spare O-rings and it's just a little storage capsule. Now, originally I was gonna do a video showing like the install on this knife, but I figured it's totally unnecessary. I mean, so many people have shown these taken apart, including myself. I've done videos in the past taking a uh, PM2 apart. So I kind of want to just show you these, you know, parts a little bit here, but I also want to tell you the story of taking this apart because this is originally uh, Black G10 S30V, just a very standard PM2, okay? And I took all the body screws out and everything, and when I went to take the pivot screw out, I, it was a little tough to take out, but I didn't want to strip it. So I'm like, okay, fine, let me go get uh, you know a heat gun, which I do have now. I have a Harbor Freight heat gun that works very well. And uh, I was gonna do it um, outside, but it was dark. It was already you know getting pretty dark outside, so I ended up doing it in my bathroom. I have a very small little bathroom. So I'm in there, I have the heat gun plugged in, I have my um, you know PM2 there. I'm heating up the pivot area for the PM2 because I want to make sure that I get the Loctite that's on the screw really, really softened up so I, I can unscrew it and not damage anything. So I'm hitting there, I'm hitting it with the low heat and it's getting warm pretty quickly, but then I put the high heat on, the high heat, the coil was glowing red in like two seconds. It was way too hot because it was transferring the heat down the handle into my hand. Uh, so I, at that point I shut it off and I figured, all right, this is warm enough. And uh, I immediately, while I was warm, got my screwdriver kit, right, and I stripped it. I stripped the screw, the pivot screw, and I'm thinking, oh my God. So now, now I have to get this screw out because I'm, I'm halfway through this project. I definitely wanted to finish the project, but also I didn't want just a, a stripped screw. I just can't handle that. There's, there's some kind of OCD deep down. I can't have a knife with a totally stripped out screw in it. I just know it's stripped, it bothers me. It's like having a beautiful sports car with like a big dent in the side or something. You'd probably just get it fixed. You wouldn't want to drive around with it, you know? So at this point, I, I'm just a little frustrated and I think, you know what, I'm just gonna cut it. I'll cut it with the Dremel. So I got the cutting bit and I did this in the bathroom too, because again, it's dark outside and I wasn't really thinking. And this is why I'm telling the story because this is very important, very important stuff. So I go in there, I have the, uh, the Dremel all ready to go. I cut very carefully a little slit down into the pivot screw. Obviously I cut the scales as well. All right, but I made a nice, nice perfect little cut so I can get some shoulders on there for a flathead. All right, got the heat gun, heated up again just a little bit just to make sure it was you know softened as much as possible. Went in there with a the flathead and it popped off real fine. It was easy to get out. All right, so now I have the, uh, the pivot screw out which is destroyed. However, it's actually not, it's, it's still in here. I can show it to you. It's in this parts kit. I did, I did save it. It's right right there, actually. Let me zoom in. So I just made a little flathead, you know what I'm saying? So I can take it out because it was stripped. All right. But in doing so, I cut into the G10 scales. And I, I wanted to save these scales because why not? Why throw parts out? They were totally fine, right? But it had a cut in it. So what I ended up doing is I thought, well, there's no way I can get the cut out. It's cut in there, right? So maybe I can make some kind of like pattern or something. 
So I, I ended up cutting it all the way across because it was really just a little bit on either side. I cut it all the way across and then I took the other scale and I cut it all the way across to try to make some kind of pattern. And then I thought like, oh, maybe I'll just do like some, some slash marks, you know, like, because that's kind of like a thing. You know what I mean? That's, that's something you've seen before, right? So a couple diagonals, maybe one going this way, some kind of like 80s looking, you know, geometric pattern or something. And after I cut the second scale, it immediately dawned on me that I'm in a very small, unventilated room with no mask, breathing in G10 dust, which is absolutely horrible for you. G10 is uh, resin, glue, right, and fiberglass. Not all of them are fiberglass like you would think, like regular fiberglass, but it, it's very similar in most cases, right? It's very, very bad for you to breathe that stuff in, okay? Because it can irritate your skin, irritate your lungs. If you actually breathe the particles in the air, uh, it goes, you know, into your lungs. It can eventually cause bronchitis type symptoms. You can get scar tissue. It's no good. It is no good. Anyone who does knife making, if they deal with G10, you'll see people talk about it all the time too. Uh, you're supposed to be in a very well ventilated area. You're supposed to wear something like an N95 mask or better. Uh, and most people will say you're supposed to wet it, which makes total sense. So if you wet the G10 before you sand it and cut it and stuff like that, you lessen the chance of particles floating in the air that you're going to breathe in. It's just really, really bad stuff. So after I did that cut, I put the knife back together and then I, I was pretty paranoid. Uh, a little bit of a hypochondriac, so the rest of the night I'm like just paranoid, like, oh man, I just breathed in a bunch of fiberglass. I'm like, what's going to happen? And my throat started getting sore. I'm like, oh man, my throat's actually sore today. I'm not sure if it's from that or just a total coincidence, uh, but uh, it definitely freaked me out. I have to say, I got completely freaked out by that idea. It was super stupid. I just was not thinking. I did a quick little project because, you know, once the strip was screwed, I'm frustrated at this point, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to get stuff done real quick. But because it was dark out, I didn't do it outside. It just didn't dawn on me until I was literally cutting the second one. Uh, I'm like, oh my God. I'm, I'm like, because I'm hovered over the edge of the, the sink, you know, the, the, the using it like kind of like a table. And I'm just, I'm focusing. My face is like right there and I'm just blowing dust. Oh my God. Luckily, it's only a little bit, it's just a couple cuts, but still, it freaked me out. It's still freaking me out right now. So number one message here. The number one message is do not mess around with uh, cutting different materials like G10. Uh, unless you have experience, unless you have a lot of know-how, you should definitely research it to do it safely. Like I said, it should be wet. Uh, you should have a, a very well ventilated, ventilated area. If, if all, at all possible, do it outside. You know what I'm saying? Wear a mask so you're not breathing stuff in. Even if you get skin contact, it's not good. But breathing in is really, really not good. You can wash stuff off your hands and arms. You can't wash stuff out of your lungs very easily. So yeah, that's my, my story. That was the biggest message. Number two is the Flytanium stuff is super cool. I'm definitely digging it. This is a huge upgrade. It looks great. It feels great. Um, you know, lubed everything up. The, the polished pivot's just nice and smooth. It locks up perfect. I just like the look and the, and the feel of it a lot, which is really, really neat. Uh, I also ended up getting some carbon fiber scales as well, all right, which are really beautiful. But I have some other projects with some titanium stuff that I got in this package, and you guys will see it in the future. The other one is Victorinox related. I am very excited about that. So, you know, I'm sure you can put the puzzle pieces together if you look on the website. You can probably guess what I'm doing. But anyway, that's it for now. Just want to tell you a story. Be very, very careful if you're ever working or modifying or cutting or doing anything with your G10 scale. Same with my Carta too. You should not be breathing that stuff in at all. Um, but on top of that, if you haven't checked it out, check out Flytanium. They have some pretty cool aftermarket parts. So very excited. So that's all. Just wanted to share this. I did a video on this and I got a bunch of messages. People say, can you please make a video on the knife? So that's what this is, but it's more or less me telling a story. I thought it'd be boring if I just put it together on camera because you've seen that before. And in fact, the last project I did, I stripped out the screw on the minimalist. So I have to really just uh, slow down a little bit, pay attention to what I'm doing and hit those pivots with some heat um, to make sure that the, uh, the Loctite from the factory is loosened up before I try, you know, unscrewing them. So there it is. This one's definitely going to get some, uh, some pocket time over the next uh, week or so. But I love it. I think it looks great. I think it feels great. It locks up great. It's nice and smooth. Just a cool upgrade. Something a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? But I did want to focus heavily on the uh, G10 thing. You know, at home you might not think about it, but yeah, cutting that up, sanding it, breathing in that, that um, you know, that dust is really, really bad for your lungs. Really, really bad. It can cause your, you know, irritation in your eyes and your skin too. 
But uh, when you when you breathe it in, it's just that's it. It's in you. You know what I'm saying? You don't want any medical problems from playing around with knives. But that's all. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.